All right, everyone, I'm beginning to believe that the Democrats are not going to respect the fair and, and transparent results of the U.S. election this year. Of course, I base this partially on the understanding that Trump has an advantage. I've consistently said that. I still believe it. I think he wins the debates, at least to some degree. I don't think that Biden can do it. I think that when they say, well, on election night, be prepared for a Trump landslide, but it'll just be an illusion. We'll have to wait for all the mail-in ballots to, to get counted. You can count the mail-in ballots really quickly. That's a pile of steaming bullshit. The idea that it takes two fucking weeks to count the mail-in ballots is your way of saying, yeah, we're going to have postmarked after the election ballots streaming in by the hundreds of thousands in states that Trump clearly won with, with you know, usually dubious signatures and stuff. We're going to try to force a court decision to recognize Biden's win in places like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and so forth, to give the illusion that Biden won. Months later, you'll find out that many of those ballots were retroactively cast aside, but we'll have sympathetic judges in these countries, I mean, uh, states, well, kind of the same thing under the uh, Tenth Amendment, uh, uh, that will make sure that things uh, go Biden's way. It appears that they intend to rig the election. Now, normally the general election is fair. I've uh, sparred with many people on the, like uh, in 2016, there were so many people on the right that are like, well, Hillary Clinton's going to steal the election. It's no reason. See, the thing is, there was no machination set up to steal the general election. Normally, you have two controlled opposition candidates that stand for the same thing. When Romney and Obama were on stage, they sounded the same. Obama versus McCain. Uh, Kerry versus Bush, Bush versus Gore, and so forth. You have to go back at least to Ronald Reagan to find a significant differentiation between the candidates, between Reagan's policies, Carter's policies. You have to go back at least that far to find a candidate who at the time was largely unsullied. Trump, I believe, fits that mold as well. They are trying to rig the general election. In the last election, we didn't have to worry. They tried to rig the primaries and failed. Trump managed to outmaneuver them. That's another reason I believe he'll win anyway. Um, however, the Democrats, I think, will do what they did in 2016. When they lose, they will refuse to acknowledge the results. Hillary Clinton has consistently refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the 2016 election with the Russia ship. You'll see more Russia propaganda. Uh, you'll see more nonsense going on. And the problem is that because of the hyper-partisan, hyper-politicized climate of, of the electorate, a lot of people will just take it to the bank that that's true. They don't need evidence. They simply need a claim. If CNN tells them that the election was dirty, they'll believe the election was dirty. The funny part is it will be dirty in the other direction. We already see it happening. We've had numerous instances in the last 72 hours where, where mail-in ballots have been found stuffed into dumpsters on the side of the road and sometimes in critical states like Wisconsin or Pennsylvania. Nobody cares if it happens in California. Nobody gives a shit about that. Who cares if it happens in the middle of, of buttfuck Wyoming? It's not going to flip those elections. There's no way you could possibly commit fraud on that level, even if you had years to prepare. But in a state like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, maybe Michigan, where it could come down to a few tens of thousands of votes, as we saw in 2016, certainly a place like Florida, if it comes down to it, yeah, it could be a problem. Why do you think that they're doing everything that they can to stymie Trump from getting his RBG replacement into SCOTUS before the election? Because then you have five justices that are sympathetic towards him. You have two pre-existent, I would argue, far-righters, and three Trump appointees. If you include Kavanaugh, who's sort of a kind of, sort of swing vote, not in the Roberts sense, you have five people who will reliably vote for Trump to have won if there's a deadlock situation in which it's impossible to tell technically who won because there are too many uncounted ballots and you're approaching Inauguration Day and don't know what the fuck is going on, they will declare Trump the victor. It'll be a binding decision, and the nation will have to deal with it. I think that would be the best thing, by the way, in that situation. SCOTUS must stand on principle and award the victor. It will be clear at that point that Trump has won. They're even preparing you for a landslide Trump victory on election night. They're openly preparing you for it. Twitter and Facebook and these sites are openly preparing you for the fact that they're going to start censoring people who are like, just fucking declare the election because Trump is ahead by half a million votes in this state. What the fuck more do you, are you waiting for? They're openly doing this. There is collusion involved in this. We found in 2016, when we looked through the emails that were released from, from the Podesta leaks, um, from, from the Clinton emails, from the, from the DNC server specifically, we found that the DNC had been coordinating at the time with CNN, MSNBC, Foreign Intel, and so forth. We found lots of corruption there. It wasn't actionable, but we found evidence that they were colluding with the 
corporate media. Do you not think in the last few years they have extended their tentacles further? Of course they have. They're afraid of Trump because they're afraid that he might bring actual middle-class tax reform and literal populism and keep going gung-ho on these trade deals. Their money is in China. No goddamn shit they would want to stop him. They want to softball the Communist Chinese Party because their money is locked in Asia. It's all about the money. That's, the money is the root of all of the corruption that you see. People keep getting distracted. Well, it's a, re it's a religious cult. It's devil worshippers. It's, it's communist subversion. It's not even communist subversion. There's plenty of those out there. They're very violent people. But by and large, it's not where the money is. The money is in foreign investments. It's like with Brexit. Why do you think that the upper crust of Britain is, is so gung-ho to stop Brexit from happening? These people that pal around with their, with their billionaire buddies. Why do you think they would want to stop Brexit? Because their money's in Europe. <laughs> their money's elsewhere. They don't want a sovereign UK government that'll actually look out for the interests of the people there. They might get fucked. They might lose money. Who wants to lose money? They're voting their self-interest. Of course they're anti-Brexit. Of course all of these musicians that have uh, sales in other countries. And no shit, they're globalists. No fuck. Uh, of course. The Democrats will be faced, I believe, on election night with a differentiation from reality situation where they've been told that Biden's got it in the bag and Trump's actually got it. Like with 2016, where the polls did not comport to reality, you saw a 2.2 point swing towards Trump in the final results, as opposed to the aggregated totals. All of the markers were there on all of the sites watching them, the New York Times, Nate Silver, all of the others. They all believed Hillary Clinton had like a 90, 99% chance of winning. They were wrong because that differed from reality based on polling and enthusiasm. You will see that again, but they will blame it on mail-in ballots. They will blame the gap that you see between the documented reality and the polling reality, which will be, I think, three, maybe even more points. They will blame it instead on mail-in ballots. Oh, well, the ballots haven't come in yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trump hasn't actually won. See, he only he's only 200,000 votes ahead. Oh, there'll be a million mail-in ballots. They'll all be for Biden. That's what's going to happen. How many of those ballots will be post-dated from the election? They'll be from the 4th or the 5th. That's when they were sent out. In some states, their uh, federal courts have already ruled that they have to accept them. Pennsylvania is probably going to go for Biden as a result of this, unless Trump, uh, unless Trump curb stomps Biden at the debate so badly that he gets knocked back to the Stone Age, and it becomes clear that there's no path to victory for Joe Biden. Why do you think that all of these polling firms that are co-opted by the legacy media are cooking their numbers? Why do you think that the deviation between the sites that, uh, tip, like Erasmusen, that typically they go a bit far towards the Republicans and they oversample them and everyone else, why do you think that that gap is like five points wider than it was in 2016? It's because they're cooking their books. They're prepping you to think that Biden is ahead so that they can present that to you in the weeks after the election because they can't win it organically. And I think that they know that. And Biden is not even the candidate. He's a Trojan horse to get Kamala Harris in there. Kamala's a weak, oligarchic individual. She wants the presidency. But she doesn't really care about the power so much as the prestige. She'll have other people run the show. She'll just be the strong, empowered woman that ends up starting a nuclear war just to show she's one of the big boys. That's basically what we can look forward to with the Biden victory. I think we must do everything to stop it that we can. You need to vote for Trump. V v vote in person if you can. Make sure that you've sent in your ballot. Make sure everything's, all your I's are dotted, all your T's are crossed. Get somebody else to vote. Look out for fraud. Call it out if you see it. Don't just put it online. Report it. Report it to some sympathetic lawyer or something like that. Uh, the election attorneys. Uh, volunteer. Knock on doors. Canvas. Because Biden's people aren't. Supposedly Biden's ahead in Arizona without even knocking on a single door. I call shenanigans, dude. I don't think that that's actual reality. Not based on the approval metrics I'm seeing for Trump, that are at least as high as they were in 2016, plus uh, 10 points of additional in-party enthusiasm. I call bullshit. That's about all. Peace out.